Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. Today I wanted to demonstrate tying up my countermarch loom. So this loom is a 1940s to 50s Bergman loom. This loom was made by the Bergmans uh, in Paulsbo, Washington. And it's a unique loom in that it is a low castle countermarch loom. So it makes it fairly uh, easy for the home weaver to have in a small space. It's about the height of a jack loom. The tie up is pretty much like any countermarch loom, but because of its age, it wasn't designed for Texel uh, cord that most countermarch looms use. I've had a couple people ask about how to tie up the Bergman loom specifically. And I thought I would go ahead and demonstrate that. There's two different ways that I use, and I haven't settled on one way or the other yet. Uh, you can see behind me, I have a warp that's going on here, and I'm getting ready to tie up the um, lift plan, or the, the draft, I should say. And there's two different tie-up methods that I'm using here. Um, pretty much the left half of the treadles are tied up using a Texel cord method. And then the rest of the heddles, um, this far left one here, some of the uh, back shafts are using a the original tie-up method, which used um, linen cord, that the linen cord goes down to a loop that goes through a hole in the treadle, and then a, uh, I believe it's called a snitch knot, is used to secure it. Um, there's one cord for the upper lamb and one cord for the lower lamb. With the Texolve heddles, or I'm sorry, with the Texolve cord, you use one cord that goes from, the cord goes through the treadle hole, goes up through the lower lamb hole, up through the upper lamb hole, and then is uh, tied off. So there's one cord that goes through the whole thing. Um, so I'll demonstrate both. But the easiest way to tie this particular countermarch loom up so that I can access the lower lambs and the upper lambs easily is to do it from the back. And there's a bit more room back there. Okay. Oh. So, oh, here I am under my loom. And I wanted to point out a couple things for you that make this job a little bit easier. This actually, there's quite a bit of room under here. So um, here are the linen cords that I will be using. To make the job a little bit easier, I have a couple tools. I have some bent needle nose pliers. I have a, uh, threading, a textile threading hook or loop. And then I have a, your standard slaying hook. This will get through the holes in the treadles to pull loops up through if I need to. Um, this can help get a uh, textile through itself. And this can help get the linen cord through the holes in the lambs. We'll take a quick little tour while we're back here. And remember, this is the back side of the loom. So here are my treadles, and uh, you can see the blue painter's tape uh, on the front of the treadles, and I use those to label the treadles it makes it easier when I'm not only tying the draft up, 
but when I'm weaving, it makes it much easier to see which treadle I should be pressing. Doubly for this particular tie-up, because I am not tying up uh, 1 through 13. I am tying up 1 through 6, and then as the pattern calls for 12 and 13, I'm putting those in the middle because they're a tabby. And then I am tying uh, 8 through 11 over here. Um, then I have one left over, over on the far right. Since it's this is a 12 shaft loom, I'm only using 8 of the shafts. But the pattern that I'm doing requires either using... 13 treadles to tie it up or to change the treadling between each of the uh, different pattern towels that I'm doing. So I opted since I have the treadles, I'm just going to tie them all up and that way I don't have to get under here and mess around with the tie ups. Here are the lower lambs. These lambs raise the shed, raise the shafts. Up here are the upper lambs. These lambs lower the shafts. So I have a previous tie up that I've done here and I'm going to be reconfiguring this. Uh, the treadles on the left hand side of the loom use the Texel cord tie-up. The treadles on the right-hand side of the loom use the uh, linen cord tie-up method. So I need to uh, add some of the Texel cords to these treadle holes so that I can um, use them. And I wanted to be able to show you how those are connected. You'll notice down on the lambs, uh, even though this is a 12 shaft loom, I only have six holes in my treadles. That's because this particular loom uses two cords, two lamb cords for through each hole just the way they designed it. And it actually works out pretty good. So I am going to add uh, the Texolve to these other holes. I'm only gonna add enough for eight um, shafts. So I've prepared these uh, Texolve cords and I have two cords around just a standard washer that I got from the hardware store and the way these connect if you're not familiar with the Texolve cord they've got a hole through the Texolve spaced at uh, I don't know how what interval they are but there's common interval and I've put the well we'll just do this one So here is the Texolve cord. I put it through the hole in the washer. And then I use my needle nose um, pliers and I just push those through that hole and they can open up a little bit. I take the other end of the Texolve, grab it, and pull it through. There. So now, there. This will go under the treadle. So I will thread the two cords up through the hole in the treadle 
and um, then up through the lower lamb and then up through the upper lamb. So one chord will go to shaft one and one chord will go to shaft two. The holes in the lambs are big enough that I can get my threading hook through there. So we'll just push that down through and I'll catch the cord on there and just pull it up through. And it's easiest if you do them one at a time. Now I'm going to take these and I'm going to put one of them through the hole in the lamb that corresponds with shaft one and one of them in the lamb hole that corresponds to shaft two. Sometimes you need to use this little tool and that will just slide down through there. Just catch it on the underside. So here is my little slain hook right there. I'm going to grab my cord here. Push it, go through this little And then you just, I can't do both at the same time. All right, let's see here. All right. And then just pull that up through there. And then we'll do the same thing up here. Push that through. Put that through the loop and pull it up through the top. Okay. Once I get it through on the top, I'm going to just tie an overhand knot like that. We've got the first one in. I'll go ahead and do the second one. got that wrapped around the bottom cord. Got it wrapped around another treadle, so I had to pull it down. All right, let's do that again. Be careful when you do this that you don't get the cords wrapped around each other in between the upper and the lower lambs because it will you won't be able to treadle properly if you do that. All right. So that is two treadles down or I'm sorry, two lambs down on one treadle. When I go to tie this up, I use these little arrow pegs. These go in the little holes in the Texolve heddle, the Texolve cords. I keep wanting to call them Texolve heddles. Uh, 
they go into the cord and will keep the cord or keep the treadle raised. And then if you push on the treadle, it will pull on this lamb and push it down. If the arrow peg is on the lower lamb, it will push on the lower lamb and make it lower. If you lower the lower lamb, it raises the shaft. If you lower the upper lamb, it lowers the shaft. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of these in this treadle. It's pretty important that you get these um, kind of pulled up tight. Make sure that you don't have one longer than the other because um, if it changes uh, while you're treadling, that's going to mess up your shed. be sure to leave plenty of slack in them because when you press on the treadle, if it's connected to the lower lamb, uh, these cords need to be able to slide through and slide down. If you don't have enough slack, it's going to try and uh, lower the upper lamb also. For these treadles. With a counter march loom you have to tie up all of your shafts to either the upper lambs or the lower lambs. So for my draft shaft one or I'm sorry treadle one is raising shaft one. With the countermarch loom, that means that if I'm raising shaft one, I need to lower shafts two through seven. So I am going to take one of these arrow pegs and on treadle one, I am going to 
raise my treadle up to the appropriate height and I am going to put one of these arrow pegs in the Texol on the lower lamb on shaft one. That's the only shaft that rises on this particular treadle. I'm going to take the arrow peg out on the upper lamb so that I can show you. Shaft one has an arrow peg on the lower lamb. So on the upper lambs, I'm going to put an arrow peg in shafts two through eight. Now I'm putting these at the point where I'm just making the cord taut. I don't want to raise the treadle any more than what that first arrow peg rose made it rise. There. There is my first treadle tied up. Treadle two calls for shafts one and eight to rise. So I am going to take my previous tie up here and look at, there's an arrow peg in shaft one already on the lower lamb. Um, I'm going to take out the arrow pegs on the rest of the lambs and I'm going to adjust this first one down a little bit because it's a little bit higher than what I want it. I want it to be even with my first treadle. So I'm going to put an arrow peg in shafts one and shaft eight on the lower lamb. Those are the shafts that rise. That means on the upper lamb, I am going to put an arrow peg in shafts two through seven. Again, I'm just going to make those cords a little taut. Okay. That is shaft two. Shaft three, or treadle three, I want shafts one, seven, and eight to rise.
So that is how you set up the Texol pedals, or the Texol uh, tie-up cords. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here as it's getting rather long. In part two, we'll work on the left side of the loom using the linen cords to tie up the treadles. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for notification of future videos. Thanks and happy weaving!